Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're in Blender for the start of my SnowRunner modding tutorial series. This is going to be a rather to-the-point series showing just the absolute basics of what you need to do to bring a model into Blender, rig the model there, and then export it to SnowRunner, as well as do some coding to it to get the wheels in the proper positions, as well as add engine power, things of that nature. Uh, if you would like to watch a much more in-depth tutorial with some better explanations of how things are done and why, I highly recommend Glitchworks tutorial series. I still reference it when I rig my own trucks, uh, and it provides far more information than I do here. Uh, I'll provide a link to his channel in the pinned comment of the video, as well as in the description. Without any further delay, we're going to jump right into it. So... First thing we're going to do here is, since we're in a new instance of Blender already, I'll pull that out of the way. Also, this will show my basic habits for how I set things up in new Blender windows every time I go to make a mod. First thing we'll do here is I'll turn on my screencast keys. Where did... There it is. Uh, screencast keys on. Click. Close that. Let's say close that. And as you can see over here in the lower left, you can now see what I'm pressing on the keyboard or the mouse. So this will allow you to follow along exactly and provided you haven't remapped your controls, which I haven't, uh, you should be able to follow everything I do perfectly. So what I tend to do is I'll take the lamp here the camera and just delete them because frankly they're unnecessary for the mod the next thing you'll want to do is come over here to units click this set it to 0 0.01 that's the scale that the models need to be in for when they're imported into snowrunner and they also need to be reading in centimeters so now that that's done we're pretty much done with this panel here for the time being so now Click on the cube, press G, press Y to lock it to the Y axis, and now it's not going to go anywhere but along uh, the Y axis, and just move it to one side. The reason we move it over there is I tend to keep that cube because I've found some models will import closer to their proper size for SnowRunner as long as the cube is there. Also, it's a good thing because we're going to need a CDT and we might as well leave the cube anyway. So next what you'll want to do is come up here to File and Import. Now, it'll depend on what format your model is in. I've prepared two for this series. And you'll just come over here to whichever one of these it is. Um, in this case, it's an FBX. So we'll import the FBX, Desktop, and Tudor. Import FBX. This will take a minute depending on the hardware specifications of your PC. And as you can see, this loaded in pretty quickly. Now, as you can also see, it's roughly the right size. So, just to check, let's see if it's close to scale, click the measure button here, and always go from the narrowest to the widest, or excuse me, from the absolute edges of the truck, and this is fairly close, so I see one small problem here with the model, which I didn't notice earlier. So we'll switch back to here, go to vertical view, and yeah, it's slightly crooked. That's no big deal. So press R on the keyboard, lock it to the Z axis. So again, it's just going to spin this way. It's not going to spin any other way. So. R and Z. And that's roughly even. Also, I would suggest finding a reference point or two on your model so that you can tell which is straight and which isn't. For example, right here, actually you can see it's slightly off center. The hood line here versus the X line here. So we're going to grab this again along the y-axis and C 
call back good for now. Sneak back here. And yeah, that's close enough. There's that point there. It's roughly there. Now we'll come back to the front of the truck. The other front. I'm sorry, my keys got slightly messed up on me at one point. And we'll actually take the time to move it a touch more because that cab light is slightly off center. So now the truck is in the proper position. Now let's see. Ah, one more thing while we're facing the correct order here. We'll go back to measuring. We'll check the width of the truck again. And it's roughly two, just over two centimeters wide. Now, SnowRunner scale scouts are roughly somewhere between two and 2.5 centimeters. So, since I don't want this truck to be as big as either Thor or Doomsday, I will do this. Actually, one other thing you need to remember is you need to apply transforms frequently. So, the whole model is selected, Control A, all transforms. And now, when you scale it up, it won't go, well, frankly, weird. So, we'll just press S. And try there. Two point one five. Now I know you can get more accurate real world measurements for the truck. I basically just tend to eyeball it. So let's see. To essentially go more by what feels right versus what is technically right. I think we'll call that good. That's going to put it at about half the size, roughly, of Thor, which a Chevrolet pickup truck of this era would be, especially if it's a two-door. So, in the interest of keeping the videos short and to the point, as I said, we'll call that good for here, because right now, this truck is facing the correct orientation. It's supposed to be facing left to right on your screen like this. And... It's centered at world origin right here. Also, always remember to apply transforms when you scale a model. So in terms of direction that it's facing, the truck is correct. And it's now sized roughly the way it should be for real life. So with that being said, I'll end the tutorial here, part one at least. And we'll move on to the next part, and I'll see you then.